sucked into. It's caused a little bit of a slowdown. I'm gonna try it. Wasn't bad though. Already passed. Still in two of them. Oh, 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 I started spinning. Four high, first time. Got a big deal. All right, fine, I had to use four wheel drive because I didn't have any momentum. That's what it is. Deer. It's called Spooky Gulch. Spooky Gulch, you say? Any idea why it's called that? Um, All these dead trees? The, the trees stay dead, and the, the way the sun kind of hits it, it's, its own little alley. Mm -hmm. it's just kind of cool. Cool spot. Interesting. Is there a trail down through there, or is it just hiking? Uh, yeah, there's a road. But that snow down there is pretty deep.
So we are getting real close to the sun tunnels and uh, it is about 4 p.m. We only have a little over an hour of daylight left, I'm guessing. We are on the old uh, railway grade still. So every time I slow down and dip off, we're going by the old train trestle. We're back up on the main road. We're actually making really good times. This road's in, well, most sections of it are in really good shape. So, uh, I mean, we're averaging 40, 50 miles an hour through good good sections of this. So it's a, it's a fun drive. It's totally worth taking. Um, I'd show you more, but the, the camera just doesn't do it justice for what's out here. You're going through long patches of high prairie. We're currently sitting at 4,400 feet. We were up to almost 7,000 back there in the mountains. And uh, I got some good video of that, so we're missing some stuff. There's a runway out here for, for some doggone reason. And that runway is not on my map. Weird. Curious. Not weird. Curious. I'm sure there's something something specific going on there. Probably Air Force. I know they do a lot of uh, testing out in this area. They got a, a bombing range nearby. So, interesting. It's a weird place there. There's even a hangar. I don't see anybody living out here. I wonder what they're flying in for. But uh, getting pretty close. It's been fun. It's been so far. It's been a great trip. Good bunch of people. Uh, yeah, Gladiator is doing a phenomenal well. It is chewing up the high speed stuff. It is uh, making mincemeat out of the snow that's causing some other rigs a little bit of trouble. Granted, I'm a little bit further back, so the road gets packed a little bit, but, man, I'm spending, uh, I have popped it into four high a couple times, but only because when I got slowed down, I ended up coming to almost a stop on an incline, and instead of backing up and getting some momentum and going, just pop it four wheel and start going. Honestly, this has been a beautiful trip. Can't wait to see this uh, sun tunnels thing. Looking forward to tomorrow when the sun rises up through it. Should be uh, interesting. We're supposedly having a decorating contest. Everybody's tired and hungry. There's no chatter on the radio. And now there's going to be a bunch of chatter. As soon as I, as soon as I key up the ca camera, say something. I'm busy texting my wife, so it's all good. Yeah, I'm going to have to beep that out. Going to have to beep that out, I think. But uh, I hope you said texting and not the word that starts with an S. Gonna have to beat that out too. Like sexting? Yeah, that'd be quite the feat to do that while you're driving down the road, but uh, it is, I guess, easy to do when there's no other cars to worry about. More passengers. Yeah. It's easier if you just bring your wife along. He has a point. Uh. <laughs> So looking forward to getting the sun tunnel. Gladiator's doing great. It Who has a fancy new vehicle with a thermometer that'll tell us how cold it is outside? 32. I'm showing 30. I'm showing. I'm just gonna turn that all the way down until I finish this. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, Gladiator's handling great. Um, I thought I was gonna need airbags in the rear to help support all that weight. I haven't bottomed out once. Comparatively speaking to the Tacoma, when it had the tent on the back, even with uh, old man Emu heavy duty springs in the rear there, every time it would come down it would thunk, thunk, thunk. So this one uh, seems to be all around just a better truck. I hate to say it Toyota guys. Uh, Jeep really knocked it out of the park with this one. Um, I'm adapting well to the long wheelbase I think. I really, really enjoy it in the loose stuff. But uh, even over the rough, I mean, we're on some pretty good washboard right now, and this camera is not the, uh, it's not my Hero 7 with the image stabilization. This is just a, a 1080p GoPro with no image stabilization whatsoever. So if this is shaking, you, you feel what I'm feeling, and it's not much. Um, fuel economy. I really want an extended tank, I think. I am currently sitting at 
and I was hit right at half a tank and I've got 160 miles on that half a tank. I do have nine gallons of fuel with me and I'll put that in camp tonight before it starts getting uh, before the sun goes down and it gets real cold. Probably be one of the things I do pretty quick just because messing with fuel when it's dark and cold or in the morning after it's been sitting longer. I just, I just don't want to deal with it. So I'll do it probably as soon as we get to camp. I mean, I don't think I need the fuel. I really would like an extended tank though. I think a 30 gallon tank in this truck would be perfect. Maybe, maybe even 40, but I would settle for a 30 gallon tank. Uh, that would make me make me really happy. I'd be I, I will spend the money to put a gallon tank in this thing when it uh, when one finally hits the market. Uh, hitting a lot of dust now that we're on the on a little bit better trail and the speeds can pick up. And I am all the way in the rear. Keep taking videos. They keep leaving. Not leaving me behind. I'm just getting videos of them driving by and end up at the back of the pack front of the pack stops does their business by the time you get up there well they've already taken off so I need to top, take a, a nature break and uh, it's that is what it is so at the back of the pack you either end up waiting longer while everybody uh, passes an obstacle or you end up getting less time uh, when nature breaks or air down breaks or beverage lunch breaks whatever if you're the, all the way at the end of a mile long train it ends up being a little bit a little bit briefer rest stops for you and it looks like we are now passing through Lucent which looks to be like a double section of rail and that's about it yeah it's two tracks two track section and a couple of uh, not much to see. Nothing worth busting the camera out for or I'd show it to you. Really, the, the point of this trip, I think, is the, the views are epic, but everything's a long way away. Like, the vastness of the high desert is, uh, is probably one of the reasons to, to come out here and just see this. Like, anything I do on that GoPro is, is not going to uh, really do this area justice. What I would like to get my hands on is a good drone. So if anybody has a, a, a recommendation, small, lightweight, I don't want something that I got to bust out a Pelican case and do a bunch of setup on. I want something I can like sit in the back seat and if I want to set it off, throw it out the window and go. Uh, maybe not that easy, but just something that I can take off from my hand. And whenever I get to where I want, I have it sit on the follow me. Nothing, nothing fancy, but if you know something, you really like it, leave me a comment. Um, that I think that's going to be the next video or the next next purchase towards this uh, whole YouTube endeavor because I think I could get some some much better footage, and I think a drone would do this trip a little bit more justice than what I'm doing for it now. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it's been fun. It's a beautiful trip. That is a serious washout. Holy cow. Uh, the Enreach Mini. Uh, love it and have a problem with it. I have been uh, texting the wife about the kids back and forth. It is uh, it's a little expensive to have for the subscription. But uh, apparently one of the kids is starting to get sick again, so she's a little concerned. I think they're going to be fine. Um, she thinks they're going to be fine, too. Just uh, just feels bad for them being all super congested. But uh, my one beef with the InReach Mini is you get the preset messages. You get three of them that are free. Those three pre preset free messages can only be done on the unit itself. So I got to reach up there, click through a bunch of screens, hit OK a bunch of times, and then it goes. Anytime I want to text a non-free message, when I say free, you get a handful with your subscription. Once you go over that, they charge you for each one. So the ones you use, I, uh, I'm on the low plan right now just to test it out. The midway plan, or midway plan gives you more than the unlimited plan is like 
60 some odd bucks a month, really expensive. But uh, the bottom plan I have on, I get 10. I can't use any of my free preset messages. Like, hey, we're on the trail, everything's okay. Just the check-in messages. I can't use any of them from the tablet or the phone when it's connected to it. I can only use the messages that count towards my package and then uh, increase in cost after I've used up my package. I can't use any of those from the tablet. or I can only use those from the tablet. I can't use any of the just check-in messages from the tablet. So it's a it's a, it's a serious malfunction of the software to not have that in the app. And I know Garmin isn't listening, but Garmin, you need to fix that because it's freaking annoying. Uh, I don't know if the Explorer has the same problem. If it does, let me know in the comments. If it doesn't, also let me know in the comments because if I can send the canned messages from the app using the Explorer, I might upgrade. Uh, but past that, the inReach has done great. Uh, messages go out pretty quick after I hit send. Zero problems there, so uh, good, good. Tablet's running great. Uh, had to adjust a little bit. Uh, change the plugs to get it a, a little bit higher voltage so that it charges better. I was actually losing a little bit of voltage as I went. Or a little bit of battery charge, not voltage. Uh, it just wasn't quite enough. But uh, the Carolina Middle Masters Mount and the TAC 4, the Carolina Metal Masters Ball and the TAC form uh, arms and everything have, have held it perfectly. And it looks like we're getting ready to pull up to the top. Yeah, we're, it's right here on the map. Um, we are making the last turn off the road, it appears. which is cool so we are pulling in i'll switch over to the other camera and give you guys a little quick walk around once everybody's got i guess i should turn the radio up see if they're talking how many uh trucks went into camp I, looks like i can see three some weird some uh some mad max looking stuff i don't really understand art apparently i have no idea what's going on here i just wrecked his shot that's, um, yeah, very Mad Max. Odd. Odd's the best term I can use to describe that. What? Odd. Yeah. Clear. Clearly I'm not a fan of the arts. You don't like <laughs> desert art? That's weird. I, I... What some people call art, some people call a big pile of trash. Litter. Litter. <laughs> Litter. <laughs> and this is apparently supposed to be the fist. I've done a couple outside the toilet. <laughs> were the Legos originally part of it or was that added? Huh. I don't think that's true, that but um it, it does make for a better story. <laughs> yeah, sure it does. There's some writing on this side. It's weird. Planet I I don't speak Spanish, Baxter. Yeah, that's weird. Another weird thing to have out in the middle of nowhere. All right, we are pulling into the sun tunnels. Looks like there's a Subaru and a guy with a camper here to check it out tomorrow morning as well. We'll try not to interfere with them too much. But uh, before I get any video, I am going to uh, help Jim unload all the wood he brought and the wood I've got in here on the back too for making sure that we uh, have uh, plenty of nice warm fire tonight. 
So uh, I'm gonna unload him and then I'm gonna set up my tent. All right, let's unload some fire. Yeah, this amount of firewood is in Apparently we're going to have a long trench. Alright, now let's go find a place to uh, set up our camp. This looks like as uh, good a place as any. Over there are the sun tunnels. We're going to get set up with a little bit of light we have left. We're going to go check those out. Because that sun is just barely dipping over there. Alright, it looks like everybody's getting set up for camp anyway. And uh, I'd like to have my bed up while I still have a little bit of daylight if possible. So uh, let's, uh, let's set this thing up. I've been asked about this thing. I kind of want to show how it works and how quickly it runs. I am going to use this $9 Harbor Freight pump. Throw some gas in the Jeep. Use the uh, angle it and get that pump down in there, get that last little bit, and she's done just that quick. So I am far from a chef of any, any imagination. If it comes in a box, I can cook it. And today, since uh, I'm running solo, I'm going to be cooking out of a can. That's right, just canned soup.
move again. We uh, left camp. I think we're headed south towards Wendover. Uh, sun tunnels was cool. It was uh, interesting seeing the sun come up through there. I got some good pictures. I'll try to splice those into the video. And uh, I'll probably end up posting them on Instagram too. So uh, should uh, should make for decent viewing. And, uh, it's, it's interesting. I mean, I, I don't get modern art. But a lot of people came out to see it. And this group's been doing that that tri this trip for uh, this is the 11th year so clearly there's something to it but uh, I stayed back with Kurt and Dan kind of buried our fire pit cleaned up a little bit of mess that was left over but tried to make it look like nobody was ever there and uh, we've been doing about well, I'm slowed down now just because we finally caught up to the main group we were doing about 65 over some I'd call it decent dirt road, a little bit of washboard, uh, a couple washout places, but I was doing about 60, 65 miles an hour through a bunch of it, and man, does this Gladiator ride good. I would never dream of doing that in my old two-door. It just, it, the wheelbase did not allow for that type of high speed, all loose, loose uh, ground, but uh, oh, this thing's awesome. I, every mile I put on this truck, I get a little bit more impressed. And I'd say it's not considering how impressed I am with it already. But uh, I think we're just kind of making our way back towards the south, getting down towards a uh, near window over the interstate, throw some gas in. I think I'm going to beat feet home. We'll see what everybody else is doing. Uh, if we hit pavement, there's a high chance I'm just going to head home. It's been fun. Man, was it cold. I skipped breakfast this morning because I didn't feel like cooking. You know, it was just too cold to stand around and want to stir eggs or anything. And it's currently like 24, 25 degrees. Uh, but this morning when I got up to make sure I was up for sunrise to see the sun come up through those tunnels. So just a little trivia, if you decide to go wheeling out here and go to the west of the pilot range, which is that big mountain to your right, there's a little town about, uh, well, if I were to point a straight line, it's about 20 miles at about your 4 o'clock. If you decide to stop there for food and fuel, just be advised that they charge you 50 cents to use their toilet. <laughs> I guess that keeps people from using the toilet. <laughs> That's funny. But, uh, no, it was just too cold this morning. Uh, I want to say the truck. That town, I believe, is called. Yeah, they got another one pump, one pump of, uh, I think, unleaded. I don't think they've got diesel. All right, we'll talk later. Yeah, I had left. All right, so we are done. Get a final shot of all the rigs in the trailer and uh, air up our tires. Then it's time to head home because I am exhausted. I did not sleep well.